We are leading Shiksha Shtakam. That's four. Forty-seven page. Thanks. Forty-seven page. So now in Munger Raj Mandir, we are chanting every day a few times. Uh. This six yeah, for other Mohan. So. Na danam, na janam, na sundarim. Kavitam va. Jagad isha kamaya. Mama janmani, janmanishware. Bhavatad Vaktir Ahaituki Tvai Na no Dhanam Wealth Na that, that maybe we don't need Okay O Lord of the Universe I don't want wealth I don't want followers I don't want vain companions, beautiful women. Vain companions. Vain companions means association some with someone just to to waste my time, mm. to spend my time in vain, mm. like this, just throwing time away. Main companions. I don't want a beautiful woman or enjoyment of beautiful poetry. All I want is causeless devotion unto you. Birth after birth. O Lord of the Universe, I don't want wealth, followers, or vain companions. I don't want beautiful women or enjoyment of beautiful poetry. All I want is causeless devotion unto you, birth after birth. Shila Krishna Das Kaviraj describes how Mahaprabhu spoke this fourth verse. While the Lord spoke, his humility increased. And he began to pray to Krishna for pure devotion. It is the nature of Prema that whoever has a loving relationship with Krishna thinks, I don't have even a whiff of love. For Krishna. When the Lord spoke the verse Trinad Api Sunichena, the ocean of his humility swelled because. The Lord is the ocean of love. He is also the ocean of humility. It is said that there is no difference between humility and love. So I was... Uh, 
impressed this one actually. So Chaitanya Mapa is ocean of love. And the Chaitanya Mapa also ocean of humility. Then this, it is said that there is no difference between humility and love. This I was quite impressed. And also today, <coughs> today I was hearing Andagaji's words. All I want to cause less devotion unto you, birth after birth. So birth after birth, what do you mean? He's telling in Sadaka Deha or he he's telling Siddha Deha about you know about Siddha Deha or he's telling what kind of mood this birth after birth. So this you know we heard many time but this is interesting, you know, birth after birth. Fat and also this three, you know, like two other people we had last time we discussed. Then he said, I don't want anything else. Na danam, na janam, nang sundari. Also, kabitan ba jagadisha kamae. Mama jammani jambani ishware. Bhagavad Bhakti Aitkitvai. Could you give some comment? And I do want to something. Yeah, so <laughs> what, what appeared in me, mm. in my mind, is that this is like a, all I want is causeless devotion unto you. I don't want liberation from birth and death. It's unimportant to me. You may keep me in any condition, in any circumstance, as you, whatever makes you happy. But please, <laughs> let me have this causeless love in whatever condition you would like to keep me. Because I would like to make you consciously make you happy always in all circumstances and i think only this how to say this causeless love can make us how to say focused on happiness of radharani or radharani all other kinds of love will not give us enough peace to be fixed. It has to be unconditioned. Wow. Yeah, like this. this. Yeah, this is a very good point. I was thinking like this, but maybe another maybe interpretation also may also have. Mm. Because it is mentioned if we have a prema, we become very humble. Very humble means I don't have any qualification. Even any qualification to, to, to go back to Godfet or any qualification to do your direct seva. Mm. Maybe. Mm. So I'm very poor. Today, Guru Dev is discussing in uh, Birapak Sumanjari bus 3 and uh, some devote, uh, this name of Lai and Kanu at that time Gurudev said Lai means very humble like a sesame sesame seed so Lai and the Gurudev said love makes us very humble so if we think we are really humble, then we feel, oh, I have no qualification. 
And、uh, I don't want anything else but you, but you. And、uh, I don't want to, just I want to please you. Whatever I born, I may born again and again, but I don't want to forget to your saber. Whatever position you want to place me, or whatever difficulty you want to place me, whatever, you know, you, you give me anything, but I feel everything is your mercy. And I accept whatever you give me, humble seba, because I want to please you. This is,、uh, this is very interesting. So, yeah. so it is said. That there is no difference between humility and love. In Brihad Bhagavatamrita, we find this is Sanatana Goswami, Brihad Bhagavatamrita. Yes, yes, Sanatana Goswami. It's written when Prema ripens. Humility appears along with it. When the girls of Gokula were separated from Krishna after he left Vrindavan for Mathura, they showed the highest. Humility. Hmm. The topmost humility dwells in the crown jewel of all Vraja Gopis, Sri Radharani. So, this point, I want to know this the limit of humility. Could you say something? Limit of humility. When Krishna. I don't when... know what is the limit of humility. <laughs> Sorry. It's, no, actually, it's possible because in Stein Shri Tamrita it's written、yeah. from, the, from the Radhika side. She is telling, I have not love.、Yeah. She is telling, she is source of all love. She is telling, no love. <laughs> And I remember once Narayan Gassam Maharaj、mm. explained to us, he told, if someone h a v e n prema and telling, I have n prema, it's honest.、Uh, But、uh, Vaishnava who has prema and he's telling, no, even ganda, no, even smell of prema in me, is this humility? What、mm, I heard. Mm, mm. <clears throat> Andakati, do you understand this limit of humility? There, so here, this, this part,、mm. maybe we can read, okay, okay, okay. Maybe we can we read can to read. the end, yeah, then and then, then say something. I, I think it will, it will, yeah, then, maybe better. Yeah, so the topmost humility dwells in the crown jewel of all Raja Gopis, Sri Radharani. In、uh, his final 12 years at Puri, Sriman Mahaprabhu relished the humility and the divine madness of Sri Radha. During that time, Mahaprabhu revealed Shikshashtaka. There is no limit to the hundreds of waves of humility in the ocean of Radha Prema that the Lord experienced 
when the waves of humility came up in his heart, he asked the Lord for pure devotion. I have a suggestion. Mm. Okay. <laughs> So, it seems to me that uh, humility, <coughs> this topmost humility, reaches the frequency, zzz, reaches the level of this, uh, uh, my Ishta is mine. And I would like to always be close to my Ishtadev to render most delicate services and to make my Ishtadev happy in this way. Most delicate services, maybe also to say, with my beautiful friends. Mm. This is how it seems to me when I when I read this. When the waves of humility came up in his heart, he asked for the of to the Lord, he asked the Lord for pure devotion. So, so this devotion means complete dedication, complete pure meaning again, Swarupa, yeah, no whiff of material, any uh, influence there, just pure Swarupa awareness and in Swarupa mm. uh, making my radha happy. In this case, Mahaprabhu's case, making his or her, <laughs> because it's Radha, her Krishna. Oh, well, I got this, you know, inspiration from Andagaji's words. <clears throat> Here, Baba mentions there is no difference between humility and love. So, actually, prema increasing from sneha, man. Pranaya, Laga, Anuraga, Baba, Mahababa. And then, uh, Ruddha, Adiruddha, and Madana, Madana Mahababa. Sometimes say Moham, you know. Anyway, so this is limit of humility means it, it, it express Mahababa. Like Madana mm. Mahababa. So means radical feel separation. But so this separation feeling so intense cannot tolerate or cannot forget any moment Mohan Krishna. Mm. And then so love is increased and then humility also increased. So means I'm lowest, lowest, lowest person. But at the same time, Krishna's meditation, Krishna's attachment, Krishna's feeling is so intense. So this, therefore I feel this they show the limit of humility in kind of limit of prema. It's Mahababa and Madana Mahababa. Madana ke Mahababa. Mm. So that's I got. And then, then, what is the symptom of 
attain prema or highest prema, like Mahababa. That person's symptom or maybe kind of following this also. Because this is his just hankering. This is not to create, but you know, causeless devotion. Ahaituki. Ahaituki? Yeah, ahaituki. Mm. Ahaituki means no cause. Like a unconditioned and selfless and very pure. He's only asking pure devotion. Only asking devotional service for the Lord. This, if Mahaprabhu is Radha's, Radha's mood, then I only, only, I want only your, with Krishna's Mohan's pure devotion. So, I don't know. Mm. Gurudev, could you, could you, could you give us some, give us insight, the limit of humility? And that mood? You are telling beautiful. Very nice. Humility is the devotion. And it must be a Fradiga Dasi. This only come by the grace of Radharani. Because love cannot move without him. So Gurudev, this mood is actually, we may say Radha's mood also, Radha Dashi's mood also same. Radha Dashi is a teacher of humility. Mm. So this bus also meant for Radha Dashi's praying, right, Gurudev? Yes, only one desire. Na dhanam, na dhanam, na sundari, nothing desire. No liberation, no, that I not. Go to the my Godhead. I want to take birth again and again, but in your view. If I have to take birth again, I want to be your God. Oh. Only one desire. Oh. Only there is one. Only there is this service to to the Ishta Deva, Ishta Devi. Mm. Or, mm. or to pleasing our Lord or Ishta Devi. Mm. It's very deep. Yeah, it, it's uh, like uh, because of uh, company of experienced devotees mm. and because of uh, our own experience that came by the mercy of our Ishtadev, mm. we become relaxed, surrendered. For mm. me, surrender means relaxed. Wow, very good point. So, Andagaji says, surrendering means relaxing. 
it's just n- completely relaxing the natural position. Mm. And uh, uh, this means also this Vaikunta consciousness. Means mm. no, I, I don't have problems in my life. Mm. And I, now I have all the energy. Mm. All my energy is free. Mm. All my time is free. Mm. I don't have any other worries. Mm. I'm secure, mm. and it all—it's all all happened mm. because the, of the mercy of Radha, mm. my guru, mm. and my devotee friends. Mm. So now mm. I'm ready mm. for a payback. I know that I will never so, be able. You know, but this bus actually <laughs> they say na danang, na janang, na sundari. Means I'm on completely satisfied whatever I situated. Yeah. I don't need anything else. I don't want to any business with you. Because I'm completely peaceful, I'm completely satisfied by your mercy. I understand, I'm realizing you give me everything to everything. me. So just to, my desire is just to, I want to please you. I want to do humble seba. Yeah. But, uh, Neophyte devotee, like me, you know, oh, I want to, you know, money, I want to, you know, a follower, I want to beautiful, you know, lady, or I want to nice facility, nice house, nice car. Like, you know, we are thinking like this. Yeah. But actually, Gurudev also saying, actually, everything in, in this material world also divine. If our consciousness is divine, whatever mm-hmm. we see, we could see everything divine. Mm-hmm. Everything for Krishna Seva, Radha Rani Seva, Radha Mohan Seva. Mm-hmm. And uh, actually, by the mercy of Gurudev, by the mercy of Radha Rani, Radha Moha, actually we have everything with us. So we don't need anything else. Just I want to give you my seva, my heart, my love. That's it. So this is very amazing. Huh? It's interesting for me. In the, I think in Chaitanya and Charitamrita, mm. there is one one uh, like statement that Krishna said. Or Mahaprabhu, or Krishna, I think, said, mm. he said, if my devotee is asking me for something material, mm. it means that still he is like, it's not pure, it's mm. still in material world, mm. material consciousness. Mm. And then he said, but I fulfill his desires mm. in such a way mm. that his attachment to my lotus feet mm. will grow. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, Radha and Krishna helps. <laughs> and also, I think Bhagatam say, I think Lord Krishna say, if someone who claim I am your devotee, ah. it's, he's, he's or she's not my devotee. Someone who ah. say, I am I am servant of servant of servant of devotee. Mm. Or servant of devotee. Yeah. That person is my dear devotee. Mm. <laughs> that means, you know, he, he put most lowest position. Mm. 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 Interesting. Yeah, I also remember when, when by the mercy of Radha, mm there is realization of we have realization that, meaning like a direct experience mm. of how much Radha loves me mm. then also we relax Radha is taking care of me I am sheltered I am protected made protected made servant of Radha. Radha likes me. Radha loves me. She takes care. We have to see Kasi 
of Radha. We have to meet the Dasis of Radhika. That is sanctuary person in Vrindavan mm. to find out what to learn from her, their behavior, mm. how they behave. We don't want to know their teachings, behavior is the teaching. Mm. In Sadhak, they have what they do in. The acting that is their behavior. Mm. How they are acting and how their life is. That the sadhak they are is also becomes Siddha there. Mm. That we go to see. Without meeting with sadhus and Vaishnava, this realization not come. Okay. So we have to be a position of viewer, and then we have to see someone who is Radha Dasi, and uh, we 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 have to learn how they behave. Day, day by day, daily life. And then if we are viewer, we could run. But if we think I'm doer, we cannot run. Not so many things. So therefore, Gurudev, you are may you are always say, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Hoy. Rabba Matora Sadhu Sange Sarva City Hoy. So if we could contact with real Sadhu who is Radha Dasi, we feel, we see, we could realize his humility, his behavior, his love, then we may realize if fortunate, immediately we could feel, oh, this is a real thing. Mm -hmm. One may ask here, if Mahaprabhu is the ocean of divine love, then why he, does he still pray for pure devotion? And here is the answer. It is the nature of Prema that the lover thinks I don't have even a whiff of love for Krishna. Real devotion means that one is never satiated. Actually, Rupa Ragunata or other six Gosami mood also, I think this mood. They never say, I saw Krishna, I also with Krishna, you know, with Radha Mohan. No, when I can see or when I can enter that kind of, you know, vision or dira, kind of always hankering. Always they have greed. So, and this is very connecting, I think. It is said, uh, to enter Raganuga Bhakti is only one qualification needed. We don't need, we don't need to, you know, study, you know, of course, maybe study Shastra is maybe okay, but uh, 
We don't need any qualification, but the only one qualification we need. This is greed for, for, for who want to get it. So this is also maybe connecting, especially for love, getting love, getting prema might be, you know, we need to this kind of uh, greed. And uh, if someone have, who has love, maybe say, I have love. Or well, actually, you know, many times, sometimes some devotee asking Narayan Maharaji, do you realize? And what he answered? You remember? <coughs> remember. He never said, I'm realized. Well, I've seen Gora Gomina Sai Maharaj, he said. Never, <laughs> you know, I say, you know, I'm realizing such as he never said like this. Mm. Oh, Narayan Maharaj also never said like this. Mm. And, uh, you know, our Gurudev also never said, I'm realizing, I'm perfect. No, I'm a student. Mm. <coughs> I forgot Narayan Maharaj what he said. And also, Mahanid Sang also, he did not say anything like this. Or any sadhu. He may not say, no? probably. This is uh, very impressed. Real devotion means that one is never sat uh, satiated. Because if we satiated, if we say we are happy, then our feeling stopped. Mm. Love is kind of stopped. Loving feeling is stopped. Because loving feeling is, uh, Guru Dev said, go well down. La, la, raga and anuraga. But if we say, okay, I'm happy, I'm satiated, then that kind of wave flow may stop. And also maybe our advancement also may stop. Yeah? Oh, now I know everything. No, I don't need to learn from anybody. Then maybe our advancement stop it. So this is I think very good point, I feel it. So therefore, this next sentence also mm. very interesting. <clears throat> One can measure One's thirst, thirst eh? mm. Mm. I think it's, hmm? I think it's wrong translation. Anyway, let's read. One can measure one's thirst. Ah, this yeah, correct, correct. Separation. <clears throat> One can measure one's thirst from one's relish for the rasa of bhajan. Hmm. One can measure, understand, one's thirst from how much he is relishing the rasa of bhajan. Well, we may say, how one can measure, one can understand how much greed mm. for the last of Bajan. Mm. How to, how, how greed for the service, how greed for the hearing harikata mm. or tasting this rasa. Mm. Because if our heart is pure and if we have desire, greed, then we want to more seva, more harikata, more hearing. Prema always keeps the heart of the lover agitated with deep thirst for more prema. <laughs> <laughs> 
the more one tastes, the more one thirsts. And the more one thirsts, the more one tastes. Oh. In this world, hunger and food diminish each other. But in the kingdom of love of God, it is exactly the opposite. There, in the kingdom of love of God, the taste of Krishna's sweetness increases the thirst for prema, and vice versa. Mm. There, in the kingdom of love of God, the taste of Krishna's sweetness increases the thirst for prema, and thirst for prema increases Krishna's sweetness. So, therefore, interesting. So, we are reading Virapaksumanjali. So, Virapaksumanjali, Raghunadas Goswami, Shuripada is describing how much thirst, how much hankering, how much lamentation for, for this prema or the rasa of bhajan. Then, the taste of Radha Mohan's sweetness is naturally increased. So therefore, Raghunath Das is this tasting this, this uh, Radha Mohan's sweetness or Radha Dashan's sweetness, service of Radhika's sweetness is more increasing. Then more hankering, more greed, more lamentation coming. So in that last stage of his life, Ragnadas' life, last stage he wrote that book, it is said. So means his lamentation is kind of limited. Mm -hmm. Limit of lamentation, limit of prema he exhibited. Means he's tasting kind of limitless or limit of taste of Radha Dasha and Radha Mohan's Seva. <coughs> yeah, like taste, thirst, taste, thirst. Taste, taste thirst. thirst. Mm. Take and thirst. Because say, if we eat some, you know, very nice food, I don't know which one is it. Like a lasagna, or you know, I don't know, or lasagura. <laughs> That's a <laughs> You know, once tasting, oh my God, can I have more, more, that's a or that's a good, you know? And then more taste, oh, can I have more, you know? <laughs> this kind of, of course, you know, material, this material one is maybe limit, but the spiritual thing, because spiritual body is limitless. Mm. You know, one day, Raghunathas was, you know, become sick, and doctor check. Oh, you ate too much. And then other devotee was thinking, no, Ragnadas ate only buttermilk or only little bit, something, you know. So he never eat a lot. Then Ragnadas said, actually true. Yesterday, by my meditation, there is some feast, Mahosaba. And then at that time, I ate three twice too much. Therefore, I feel some kind of pain in my belly. It's very interesting. <laughs> Again, in Brihad Bhagavatamrita, we find that Narada Muni prays for this boon from. Shri Krishna. Mm. 
O Krishna Chandra, you are transcendental bliss personified. May no one ever be satiated with love and devotion for you. Ah, Narada prays for us. This is the boon I pray for. Krishna heard this and answered, O teacher of all clever arts, my dear Narada, what kind of boon is it that you want? Everyone knows that my mercy, my devotion and love are in exhaustible. No, there is no end to my mercy, no end to my devotion and no end to my love. The more the devotee advances in his love, the more he laments out of thirst for more love. Yeah, it's natural. Although Mahaprabhu is the ocean of love, although Mahaprabhu is the ocean of love, he told Svarupa Damodar and Ramananda Rai, Oh, listen, all my heart's friends, I don't have the treasure of love for Krishna. So my life is poor, poverty stricken, and my body and my senses are all useless. When someone says, O oh Lord, you are incarnation of love and your divine body is full of, of ecstatic symptoms goose pimples, tears of love. How can I believe you when you say that you have no prema? Then the answer is in Chaitanya Charitamrita No, for sure that I am just announcing, <laughs> I am just announcing my own good fortune when I cry. Know for sure that I am just announcing my own good fortune when I cry. Meaning, when I cry means I'm declaring to everyone, I'm so fortunate. <laughs> I have prema. <laughs> I am I'm so I fortunate. Prima. My God, I am tasting. Mm. <laughs> In other words, when I cry, that is not because of my great devotion. But it is only to show how fortunate I have, I am to have so much devotion. It's mercy. I'm fortunate. It's mercy. My God. 
Yeah, no pride in such a way. Mm. I am object of mercy of my Ishta Devi, of Radha. That is the wonderful nature of sacred devotional trust. And that is why the ocean of Prema is agitated by humility. That is why the ocean of Prema is moved by humility. Yeah. Mm. Humility is life of Prema. Mm. Moves Prema. The Lord humbly prays like an inexperienced neophyte. O oh Lord of the universe, I don't want wealth, I don't want followers or beautiful wife. I don't want to be known as a great poet. Since beginningless time, the living entities forget Sri Govinda's lotus feet. The living entities are deluded by Maya, wandering from one species of life to the other, attached to selfish activities, desiring wealth, desiring followers, and so on. Even those who have attained the rare human body and have even attained the path of devotion to God by the mercy of a saint, may still beg for wealth and followers from the Lord. As long as a person nourishes such contrary desires, he will be deprived of prema, even if he is doing bhajan. In Chaitanya Charitamrita we find as long as there are desires for enjoyment, liberation, mystic perfection, in the mind of devotee. He will not be able to attain prema, even if he practices sadhana. Yes, again, please. Repeat this line. Mm. 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 When there are desires for enjoyment, salvation, or mystic perfection mm. in the devotee's mind, he will not attain prema, even if he practices 
sadhana. The Gopal Tapani Upanishad states Repeat again. Repeat again. Again, repeat. When there are desires for enjoyment, salvation, or mystic perfection in the mind of a devotee, he will not attain prema even if he practices sadhana. Hmm. So I think this is a this is a very important point to to attain a Manjari Baba or to attain Radha Dasha, Radha Dasi. <coughs> so I feel this Guru Dev saying we are not doer. Doer means have desire. I have desire for this enjoyment, or I need salvation, I need some power, mystic power, I need, you know, some material thing. That means doer. We are doing. I want. Some ego is there. So, but the Guru Dev is saying, if we become viewer, if we become, we stay, fix our soul consciousness, swarpa consciousness, then become viewer. Viewer means no desire. <coughs> Only desire is the service of our Ishta Devi. So this is, this is good Devi saying, this day by day, 24 seven, we have to check it out. What our mind stay, what our desire is going. This desire is material or desire is spiritual. Or we are thinking about our Ishta Devi Radharani or Radha Dasi, Radha Dashan, or we are desire another thing. This is actually this is a very important point of Raga Bhakti. By the Bhakti may behave outside, but inside we don't know. But Raganuga Bhajan, this even slight desire, also he may not attain Prema. This is, wow. This is very, very important for me. Prema is Raganuga Bhajan. Prema is Raganuga Bhajan. Hmm. <coughs> Rag and Raganuga Bhajan. Rag means I do and I receive your love also. Hmm. Rag and Rag. Raga Nuga means Rag, I love you and you love me. That is Raga Anuga. <laughs> it's not one side and that. Oh. My Raj make you to follow this. Because it is Rag and Rag both are evidently practiced. Mm. Mm. She's my good sister. And uh, she wanted to call you because she never met you. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, that's true. 
Love means exchange. Is that true, Guru Dev say? Oh my God. <laughs> this reminds me that uh, prema is pure mercy. Mm -hmm. Without mercy, impossible, <laughs> impossible. <coughs> so Gurudev, without mercy, impossible to attain this prema. This, you know, we are completely agree, Kripa Siddha. Pure Kripa. Pure Kripa, we need. Gurudev, is Please speak in the sound. Oh, speaking Someone came sound. To okay, okay. Yeah. It's, it's written in such a way, <laughs> like, <laughs> when there are, there are, mm. it doesn't depend on me. Mm. It's given. Yeah. Because <laughs> this is our flow. Heart Angata Prabhu, can I get a read again. When there Hello? are. Mm. When there are desires for enjoyment, no, no, salvation. No, no, no. Hmm? no, no it's not prema. Prema. Yeah, this is good. Prema. Data on coming. The, the, in this sentence, this sentence begins like this. Mm. When there are desires for enjoyment, and this Prema word. Then again, I will start talking in this. Talking Prema. Is I explain any desire for these things will not bring us in Prema. Mm. Any desire out of this. Uh, Okay. Um, so, could you read now about the Prema, Rade? Uh, when when uh, there are desires for enjoyment, salvation, or mystic perfection in the devotee's mind, he will not attain prema even if he practices mm. sadhana. Go on. Oh. The Gopala Tapani Upanishad states <coughs> The path of devotion consists of intense meditation 
on God. And makes the mind free from all personal desires for fruitive activities. Bhajan has the same object here as selfless action naishkarmya in other words in the mind of the devotee there will be no other desire but the service of the Lord when the mind is free from the material modes it becomes absorbed in the taste of the Lord's service. So this is a, so when mind is free from material modes means material desire we may say. Hmm. And also it this this also say we are surrendering. Give up for the sake of. At that time, we can we can taste this the Lord's service. No. Maybe we can read this also, like when the mind becomes absorbed in the taste of the Lord's service, then he becomes free from material modes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Without observing in the Lord, my mind is observed in material things. Raga Bhakti is the mental religion. Why? Because mind is well observed. Mm. That is the main thing. Mm. Where I am giving time, that is the mind observed. My mind is observed there. Material thing or to the Lord, to the yesterday. Where is mind is observed? How much time I put where? In the Narada Pancharatra, we find the following definition of pure devotion. This is this famous Saropadi. Mm. Devotion means to engage one's senses in the service of the Lord of the senses, mm. <laughs> of the Master of the senses. Mm. So my senses are not my senses. Mm. There is another master. Mm. <laughs> By such surrender, one becomes purified and free from all designations. Yes. Other identifications. Mm. 
Yes. And personal motives. Based on these statements from Shruti and Smriti, our Rupa Goswami has given the following complete definition of pure devotion is in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So Rupa writes, the highest form of devotion is devoid of all other desires but devotion. <laughs> This is this is for us, <laughs> but service of Radha <laughs> or Radha's Moha. <laughs> this highest form of devotion is not covered by endeavors for fruitive results, by endeavors for empirical knowledge. This highest form of devotion is favorable to Krishna. Or any of the other descendants of the Lord. Mm. Mm. In the positive meaning, positive sense, Anushilana means, so there is a word Krishna Anushilana, mm. means serving the deity of Sri Krishna with one's body, singing Krishna's names, Krishna's glories, and Krishna's pastimes, with one's words, and always thinking with love of Krishna within one's mind. And in a negative sense, it means that one tries to avoid obstacles, offenses to his name and his deity form. <laughs> then Anukula. Anukula means that one is favorably, favorably disposed towards Krishna. Anukula means that one is favorably disposed towards Krishna. Kamsa and Shishupal were not favorable to Krishna. So their dealings with him are not devotion. When one deals with Krishna with the purpose of giving him pleasure, this is Anukula. One deals with Krishna with the purpose of giving him pleasure. The demons gave Krishna a lot of fighting pleasure by attacking him 
with their weapons. But this can still not be counted as devotion because they did not fight with Krishna for this purpose. They hated Krishna. This is not Bhakti Ras. Hmm. On the other hand, when Madre Yashoda left Krishna, who was sucking her breast, to save the milk from boiling over, it did not make Krishna happy. Krishna got angry with Yashoda. Still, this is counted as devotion because Madre Yashoda's attitude towards Krishna was favorable. And this is called Anukulyana. Uh, then Sopadika devotion can be Sopadika motivated or Nirupadika unmotivated motivated Devotion can be motivated and unmotivated. There are, again, two kinds of motivated devotion. Devotion with ulterior motives. and devotion mixed with other desires. The first one, devotion with ulterior motives, means desires, we do devotion, with desires for sense enjoyment and liberation. And a mixture with other desires means that devotion is covered over by endeavors for knowledge and renunciation. <laughs> Pure devotion means engagement in hearing, chanting and remembering the Lord's names, qualities and pastimes without any ulterior motives or a mixture with other desires. And this pure devotion also are known as Uttama, Nirguna, Kevala, Mukya, Ananya, <laughs> Ananya, <laughs> Akinchana, and Svarupa Siddha. Again. Hmm. Pure devotion means engagement in hearing, chanting, and remembering the Lord's names, qualities, and pastimes without any ulterior motives 
or a mixture with other desires. And such a pure devotion also goes under other names like Uttama, Nirguna, Kevala, Mukya, Ananya, Akinchana, and Svarupa Siddha. Pure devotees do not desire anything else but the Lord's devotional service. When Shrin Risimhadev was pleased with Prahlada's prayers, Nesimha offered Prahlad a boon. But Prahlad said, O Lord, O teacher of the universe, I am very much afraid of attachment to material desires. Therefore, I took shelter of you for the sake of renouncing material desires. My heart is naturally contaminated by material desires. So please, don't make me greedy for any material boons. Are you offering me boons that will cause my bondage to material world and that are the seed of the knot in the heart simply to show what are the symptoms of a devotee? Otherwise, how is it possible that you, who are so merciful, are engaging 